Okay, so we just figured out two important formulas. Frequency is equal one over a period, and the wavelength is equal velocity of sound in the tissue over the frequency. First of all, you must remember those two formulas. They will be on the board exam for sure. However, I've told you that you must remember three things in order to succeed in ultrasound physics. First, you need to remember formulas. Second, you need to remember definitions. And third, you need to remember logical chains. So let's move on to definitions of frequency, period, and a wavelength. First, the frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. What is the cycle? Remember when we have discussed the formation of sound wave? We have found out that particles of the tissue are bouncing back and forth from their resting location all the way to the right, then all the way to the left. Remember that? Then back to their resting place. This movement is called a cycle. So again, frequency is the number of cycles per one second. Let's take a look at this graph. How many cycles do you see occurring in one second? Correct, five and a half which means that the frequency of this particular ultrasound wave is 5.5 cycles per second, or 5.5 hertz. Now, how many cycles do you see occurring in one second here? Well, let's say two and a quarter, or 2.25 cycles per second, or 2.25 hertz. Now, let's take a look at both graphs here. Their horizontal axis is labeled with time, and their vertical axis is labeled with amplitude. So what is amplitude? The definition of amplitude is maximum deviation from the baseline, which in our case is horizontal axis. The deviation may occur above the baseline or below the baseline. The amplitude is unitless value, which means there are no units. So we figured out the frequency of both waves. The one on the left is 5.5 hertz. The one on the right is 2.25 hertz. Good. Let's recall the formula of frequency one more time. Frequency is equal one over a period. And the formula of period is period equals one over frequency. Since the horizontal axis determines time, we can calculate how much time it will take for one complete cycle to occur. Bingo! That is the definition of the period. So the definition of the period is time of one full or complete cycle. Again, time of one complete cycle. It is labeled with letter P. As you see, it is time between two identical points on two consecutive cycles. Now, compare the period of the wave on the left to the period of the wave on the right. Which one is longer? You're absolutely correct. The one on the right is longer than the one on the left, which means that the higher the frequency of the wave, the shorter the period. And this is your first logical chain you must memorize. As frequency of sound wave goes up, its period goes down, and vice versa. The lower the frequency, the larger the period. Go back to the frequency formula and you will see that frequency and period are inversely related, which means that if one of them goes up, the other one goes down and vice versa. Now let's switch to these two graphs. First, let's learn the definition of the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between two identical points of two consecutive cycles. So the only difference between the graphs, the two graphs we saw before and the ones we see now is that the horizontal axis is now determines length or distance instead of the time. As before, 
the frequency of the wave on the left is higher than the frequency of the wave on the right. You see that? Recall the formula of the wavelength. The Greek letter lambda, which you see here, is equal to velocity of the sound divided by sound frequency. Now look at these two graphs. What do you see? You are right. The higher the frequency of the sound wave, the shorter the wavelength. And vice versa. The lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. The wavelength. And again, you see the inverse relationship between these two values. And this would be another logical chain you must memorize. The higher the frequency, the lower the wavelength, and vice versa. And now let's move on to the next lecture.